and three, two, one, boom. And we are back with another episode of Socratic Gamers. This episode brought to you by Zen Real Clothing Co. Um, check out the free playlists on Zen Real Radio. And if you feel so inclined, pick up some apparel uh, and or accessories at zenrealclothingco.com. Use offer code SGPODCAST at checkout for 20% off select items. Okay, uh, this is a Socratic dialogue. Today's episode is on the new normal. So we are definitely in COVID times. Well, we are in COVID times. It's been, how many weeks has it been, Vish? Like eight, something? Yeah. I, I, like I saw like, um, what were you saying? About two months? About two months. Yeah, so which is eight weeks. Okay, yeah, true, true, true. Because I saw this person saying like, um, 50 days of quarantine. Like I was checking out this meme, like 50 days of quarantine and blah, 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 blah. And I was like, it's been 50 days? Like, what the hell? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but like, it's weird because this 50 days has really reshaped and restructured society in a way that this is kind of how it'll be forever. Like, I, I know going into this, I was saying like, this is like the 9-11 of our time. You know, yeah. like everything changed after that. We had like increased security, et cetera, et cetera. And like, mm-hmm. I think with with the whole COVID thing, so much is going to change after this. Do you, do you feel the same way as well? Yeah, I think so. I mean, yeah, of course. Yeah. So um, I saw this stat yesterday and I was like, oh, that's actually really, that's really like on the mark. So uh, Andrew Yang, because I follow that dude on Twitter, shout out to Andrew Yang. Uh, he re he retweeted or he like, he like, typed out I don't, I don't remember which but it's uh, economists project that 42 percent of the jobs we are losing right now are gone for good mm-hmm. and i was like yeah that's true because as as we were driving so we were going to like pick up um a pizza and on the way there a lot of the stores that had been up are like closed down now you know or because we're, we're in different areas right so like you're you're more in the suburban area and we're like downtown um, because of this whole social distancing, distancing thing. But like, have you noticed yeah. that where you are as well? Um, like, no. Oh, really? Eh? Maybe because like, it's more small businessy over there. Yeah. 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 Like, but I, I, or like, I don't mean small businessy because these stores that I'm seeing that are closing down are small businesses, but like those small businesses where you are, cause we grew up over there. It's like they're long standing businesses. You know what I mean? Yeah, like I think, they, yeah, yeah. Like, I think a lot of them were already designed in a way. For, like I'm talking about more about restaurants, mm-hmm. uh, right? And those are the ones who are the most impacted with this. And if you were already designed with takeout, you are probably doing maybe just okay right now. Okay, so, so you think we're like they're like breaking even and they're surviving? Yeah, but if you think about it too, even when we were here, it was like, when do we eat at the place? We always just did takeout. Actually, you know what? That's that's so funny that you say that. Because remember um, the one at the top of the hill? Damn, what was that place called? It was like um, Chang's. That Remember the Chinese food place next to uh, the yeah. hot yoga? Yeah. And we used to go there and like pick up the food and then go back to my house and like we'd game? Yeah. Yeah, so like, yeah, I see what you mean. Like within that area, it's not really social – I guess for like younger people, but like, because like I'm thinking about the Black Dog, like that's that's one there that's like, yeah, that one would be more impacted because that is very much like a social thing. It's a pub, of course, right? So right, totally, and nobody can like yeah. take out drinks. But I I guess certain like where we are now, um, these like Asian restaurants are selling alcohol for takeout as well. Mm-hmm. So like maybe if they do that, but I think the last time because they have pretty cheap gas over there. Yeah, but when mm-hmm. you think about like takeout or you don't really think about the pub, right? It's it's more these places were designed for social, like for interacting with other people, right? So you wouldn't if you're gonna get food or takeout, or if you want to get drinks, you just go to El Cibio. Mm, you... Fair, fair. That's a fair point. Actually, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's like what if if your business is a pub like the black dog it's like how how do you sustain your business or do you just shut down and just hope for the like weather the storm you know like the the last time i drove by because like there's a gas station there that's like pretty cheap um mm-hmm. it looked like it was just shut down i was like oh, okay you guys are just doing nothing 
Right. Like not not like not closed down, but like shut down. Like everything was like put on hold or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 It it's weird to think how because they canceled all major events until August thirty first. So like the CNE's done and like uh Caravan, all this stuff, it's like it's they're they're not issuing permits for it this year. And yeah. I, like that is a huge tourism booster too because that's a way to like generate lots of money quickly and like have summer jobs for students you know yeah and that is uh, it's good for the local restaurant economy wherever as it is so with that you have a huge you have a huge reduction in revenue right there and you, you already can't pay your rent right now so uh, yeah it's true and there, of course, we'll see you know a lot of ramifications of this within the next few months. To- totally, totally. And and what they're saying is like the restaurant business already is super hard to generate income. Yeah. So yeah. if you want to, you know, if if you want to sustain it, it's like you're already kind of floating. But for this, it's like you've kind of popped the bubble. But so I'm I'm watching like Ozark right now, right? And basically, the show yeah you, you haven't still watched it, right? No, I haven't. Okay, so basically the show, it's so fat. Like, I think you'll really love it from, like, a business perspective point of view. So what it is is he launders money for the cartel. Right. And what he does is he sets up these businesses. So, like, his his partner – spoiler alert. So his partner gets caught in the first episode for, like, stealing from the laundering money. Right. Right. So – in order to not get killed, the main character says, oh, I can launder way more money in this new venture that I was going to set up. Like, just keep me alive and I'll do this for you, right? And the guy's like, mm-hmm. all right, sure. So, like, you're watching him start off in, like, like the middle of nowhere in order to, like, launder more money. But in order to do that, he has to set up businesses that right. appear to be working really well and then mm-hmm. funnel cash through that, Right. That's, okay, bas- yeah. that's basically the show. So then you're just watching him like set up these businesses. Anyways, it got me thinking about like the stores and like if you were opening up a restaurant, that would actually be a, an easy way to launder money. And like if you're the ones that are surviving right now, like it makes you que- – like obviously this is a conspiracy theory, but it makes you question like how are you surviving? Mm-hmm, you know, right, how, yeah. how are you paying that bill, you know? Unless mm-hmm. somebody's fronting you the cash or something, you know, like we we don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't know. <laughs> but like, it, it's just fascinating to me. It's like, how did these things not get sold? But then, like, you know, uh, Oliva, Oliva, you know, like yeah. on, on Young, like you, you know, yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? so that that got shut down right away, um, and a bunch of other stores too, just like shutting down, shutting down. So it's like, yeah, I, I could see them not being like they are not in like the major profitable range that um like like i used to go there i i did get some things from there before so i could see why oh, okay yeah, okay like, so you already like, knew it was like oh this is like a downhill um, yeah it's i mean you can tell the location and everything right it's kind of a little bit further than shepherd young and shepherd so it's like true yeah, yeah i see what you're saying i i don't think they were doing well um in the general sense but like they're fully shut down like they're, yeah, yeah they closed <laughs> They're like done. Yeah. And um, I, another the one that really freaked me out and I was like, oh, this thing, like this was weeks ago. But then when I saw it, I was like, oh, this is a big issue. Like this is hitting bigger businesses. You know, the Radisson when you're on 401. Mm-hmm. So that yes. that shut down. Yeah. No one's going to a hotel. Right. And it like. They, no- yeah. Right. But it it's like it's like, man. What does this mean for other businesses? It, it's it is going to impact big businesses a lot, actually, um, not just small businesses. Uh, like even like right now, the malls are still going to be closed. Oh yeah, so, I didn't even think about that. The malls. Yeah, malls are going to be still closed. Uh, so the food court that's in the malls they're not making any money because they can't sell that stuff true and and these are all franchises so like if you're thinking like yeah. oh um but wouldn't they just get money because they're a part of a giant chain right so like mm-hmm. you see a mcdonald's right and you're thinking like oh they're probably pulling money from other mcdonald's but what you do 
uh, for those of you who don't know how franchising works, is you license the uh, trademarks from the bigger chain in order to open yeah. up your business. So yeah. you, you're not actually a part of you're not actually a part of the bigger whole. You're just a normal business, like an independent business that's trademarking, like pulling yeah. some of the trademark, you know. Yeah. Obviously, you get like access to the distribution and like you get, you get a part of the network. But in terms of like funding it, that's like completely on your own. They're not going to give you money to do that, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's why you see like certain McDonald's and stuff. They're like one's way better than the other because like the owner of that's like, OK, we can have more money if we just like up the aesthetics of our place, you know. Yeah. There's like even like Nando's, like the news came, I think it was yesterday, like. 21 of their locations are going to be permanently closed. No. Yeah. Wow. Damn. It's, yeah. It, it, it's, it is. You can see it happening. It's creeping. You're seeing what will happen and what we'll see in the next few months. But, but going with that, though, so, like, even though it's a shock to see, like, oh, Nando's closed down. So you're thinking, like, okay, Nando's, the giant Nando's, the, the conglomerate is getting, like, mm -hmm hit really hard but it's like yeah. again going back to franchising it's really just those independent owners that are franchising off of nando's that are being hit and of course like nando's the conglomerate's getting hit because it's not getting its licensing fees you know so that's how that's how they make money but at the same time it's not i don't think it's a huge signal for global nando's you know yeah yeah well yeah <laughs> Uh, well, I'm just saying that was just what they said as of yesterday. So we don't know where these things go. And True. I, I I agree with you. Like how um, J.C. Penny went bankrupt, AMC mm -hmm. went bankrupt, like yeah. all these things. Yeah. If you were already doing bad, uh, this is not good, right? Totally. Yeah. Totally. Totally. I wonder if at the end of this, you're going to get like a select few that are at the top. Remember how we were talking about this for a, a long time? Um, how. How like if things progress, you're gonna see like certain certain like heads. It's sort mm -hmm. of like Coca Cola, um, Facebook, right. Amazon. Because mm -hmm. what they're doing is they're all buying up little companies. Not little, but like so. Like Giphy just got bought by Facebook, right? And Giphy mm -hmm. is how we have those memes. Okay. Right. right. Like you, you know, like you do like a little. Yeah. Um, yeah. A, a gif response mm -hmm. right so um facebook bought that i'm assuming because they're like why are we paying this company this licensing fee to connect it to facebook why don't we just own it you know just like how they own instagram now you know like google owns youtube so i think we're gonna have these like giant heads at the end of this that are tech companies that own just like everything it'll be like you think mountain dew is its own thing but it's actually a part of the coke family Mm -hmm. you know right yeah yeah i think that yeah i can see that happening right because like like it's how else how else is it going to work out you know the only people mm -hmm. the only companies that have the most money at the end of this are the ones that have like trillions of dollars right well not trillions like what they're saying is uh jeff bezos may be the first trillionaire in uh 2026 yeah. Mm -hmm. But so, yeah. Right, so anyways, so like billionaires. Okay. So you have these like billion dollar companies, you know, mm -hmm. that, that can afford to weather this storm. But by the end of it, it's like, who else is, who else has that kind of cash flow? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't mean, I mean, there are some businesses that are doing well. Of course, Amazon's doing well in this thing because there is a huge uptake in online purchases, right? Yeah, I, to I, I totally agree. And um, one of the, speaking of doing really well online, Zoom is doing incredible online. So I, I saw like um, the Gracies are doing uh, Zoom classes now. And I was like, oh, that's weird because like you had your online. So like, why would you do a Zoom class, whatever, whatever. But so mm -hmm. it, it got me thinking like how much does, if all these companies are using Zoom, right? Um, yeah. All these like businesses, even to interact like within each other i don't know why nobody uses freaking google it's like free come on man but like zoom has breakout rooms and like it's just got more functionality so um everyone's using zoom now and the cost is 14.99 per month there's a free version of course but you have like limited um 
but the the one above the free version is fourteen ninety nine, and then it gets more and more expensive. But at fourteen ninety nine, and everyone's using it, that's a yeah. lot of money. You know, that's almost <laughs> like you just propelled yourself in the Netflix category. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, unwittingly, like they were just like this video company that they're like, oh, this is a great way for people like companies who are global to stay connected. And then now everyone's using it. It's like it's become the new um, the new normal. You know, it's become like like how everyone's like, oh, like Netflix and chill. Right. It's become a meme. But like mm-hmm. now it's like jump on Zoom, <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> but what's also kind of weird to me, though. It, it's almost like – so you know like the technology funnel, how it's like early adopters, uh, early majority, late majority, et cetera, et cetera, right? There's like a, there's like a flow of people who adopt technology, right? Yeah. yeah so yeah. all of, it's, it's like because of COVID, all of the laggards, which is like the very last people to adopt a product, mm-hmm. have jumped on board, you know? Yeah, that's so, true. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? So you exploded all of a sudden on the scene and it's mm-hmm. like there's no other competitor because like because like zoom became i don't even know how like I, I can't wait for that business wars episode to come out when they talk about zoom but like how did zoom crush the competition like i never heard of any other online platform other than zoom like obviously there's discord we're using discord right now how come nobody's using discord you know what i mean yeah yeah, yeah. like what marketing uh-huh. tactic I don't know exactly. Yeah, it just like was overnight. Yeah, it was overnight. Was... But but could it have been like, or maybe if like Zoom is owned by IBM, I yeah, like, right. I, but they're not. I don't know if they are. Like I just said that. But no, I know, I know. Yeah. Like what? What could it have been? Or like some major company decided to use that, and then that became like the de facto standard for everyone. Like everyone's using Zoom, which is weird to me. It's like, like all right. So like I work for this yoga yoga studio, and um, one of one of the online platforms that they were using was like some random one. I had no idea what it was called. I was like, okay, sure. So I was like, okay, that's one of the competitors. And then they switched to Zoom and I was like, what the hell's going on? <laughs> Everyone's using, so like there's so many free options, bro. Right. Yeah. Like why does it have to be Zoom, you know? Or like, well, or, because oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like as everyone is already using it, then. They're accustomed to it or what? Yeah, yeah. Then it's like, it's better to stick with the platform people get to like know more about right versus like teaching something about a new platform true yeah i see your point yeah right like like zoom became that level popular that people are just going to start using that so you should use that too in general because then it, it just makes it more easier for right everybody. right it, i liken this to uh, the keyboard you know, um, the QWERTY keyboard that we all use. And like they yeah. found out that it was actually less efficient than the keyboard that you use, right? That the one, and it like always pisses me off because like every time I use your phone, you have this like random keyboard. It's more efficient, you know, but we're not used to it. Right. So like for yeah. me, well, it's my, like. My, yeah, but my use of it wasn't for because it's efficient. My use was it just to. To troll yeah no I, I know i know i know that's why it's <laughs> funny to me but like that that's the story of like the qwerty keyboard so right, like, right right like it just became the de facto standard so nobody decided to switch even though it's like it's a less like it's an inferior product yeah it's like something you can't change now like because like, it, be it's built in and everything now yeah 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 and then you have like those specialists that have like those weird keyboards and they're just like doing crazier things. Like, like, did you know that there was, because I video edit, there's like a keyboard specifically for video editing. It looks like a normal yeah, keyboard, it, yeah. but it's like, yeah. it's got like, there's just hot keys or something. And I was like, oh dude, this is so weird to watch people use it. Like me and me and another person are using the exact same functions, but they're mm-hmm. a lot faster because their keyboard has like additional features, you know? Yeah. Right, like all the shortcuts and stuff. Yeah, it's sort of like um, what was that? Um, the controllers for video games. You have like a trigger at the bottom or something like that. Mm-hmm. Like I've seen those like weird, weird controllers now with attachments. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's weird. So yeah, so I I think like in tandem with with the Zoom thing, I heard um, as well that uh, business class 
for uh, planes, they might just get rid of that because people are doing oh, really? yeah because people are doing more Zoom instead of uh, flying to places. You know, it's like it's more cost saving, so it's like we don't right. actually need that anymore. Right. Right. But it, okay. okay. But it also makes sense because like, why would you be spending so much money? Like you have like all the so like if you look at the plane as a whole, right? It's got a limited amount of real estate for people to sit, right? And if you make those crazy prices for mm-hmm. half of the plane and it's not being filled, what's the point? Might as well make the whole thing economy and you can fill the whole plane every single time. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, Mm -hmm. because like oftentimes, like when you're walking through like first class and then business, you're like, oh, these aren't even sold, you know? (laughs) Right, right, right. Yeah, uh, maybe. I I didn't hear that one, though, of removing business class seats. It makes sense since you now have to do social distancing in planes, right? Oh, really? Oh, that's the new normal, too? I didn't know that. I think that's going to be a new normal until like a vaccine vaccine or something because you they can't make you sit beside someone else. I don't think so. Like the wow. middle row or MT right, or right. Yeah, yeah. That's fascinating too. In in terms of like the vaccine, because um, somebody asked Trudeau, "What if you don't develop a vaccine?" And he's like, "Well, we'd learn to live with it. Like how like HIV doesn't have a vaccine, stuff like that. You know." Yeah, but like in general mm-hmm. sense, though, if you I if it's like herd immunity, I think it's like you need about sixty to seventy percent to have herd immunity, then that's kind of where you want to go if there's no vaccine. Okay, so you're thinking that that we might just shoot for herd immunity if we can't figure out a vaccine. Oh, well, that, yeah. that's the only option. But, but what, I'm, what I'm thinking is, like, if we prolong this lack of a vaccine, mm-hmm. like, and halt the economy, the changes are going to be, like, so dire that we are not looking at the same world we we went into. You know, it's almost like you went into a cave and then you came out years later and you're like, oh my God, the world's changed. You know, remember about, um, Blast from the Past, the movie? No. No? Okay, all right. Quick synopsis. Um, ben, what's his name? Ben, who's the guy in the first mummy? Uh, I don't know his name. <laughs> but you, you know, you know that guy, right? Um, yeah. Guy, right, so, so that guy, he, oh, Brandon, uh, Brandon, something, Fraser, Bre- Brendan Fraser, Brendan Fraser. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Brendan Fraser, him and his family, they built a bunker in like the sixties or something. And then uh-huh. because in case there were like bombs, you know? Right. And yeah, yeah, yeah. so, but he was like a little kid and then they pressed the timer and then there were no bombs, but they got locked in for all those years mm-hmm. so they lived underground for all those years and then when the timer finally opened they came out and the whole world was completely different it was like futuristic right it was like our time right right, right. and i kind of feel like that's what this whole covid thing feels like it's like we're going inside and then when we reemerge, it's like what does this landscape look like you know yeah 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 i, I, I of course uh yeah there's gonna be a big changes i think it's more about like how to figure out, um, I, like where. I think it's about more about efficiency. I guess I think that's what's going to happen in businesses. It's mm, more like, true. Well, yeah. Do we need a person like this? Or, or yeah, so yeah. Since we don't need that, uh, can we cut this down to doing? Can they work from home and things like that? Mm. Like, yeah. They so, will be doing a lot of that kind of efficiency kind of looks at it, so that nothing changes in the next time a pandemic hits. Right, right, right. So they're not like fully um, shifting everything. They're not overhauling everything like we did this time. Yeah. So, yeah. so speaking of which, did you see the Twitter CEO uh, Jack Dorsey? He he said like all of our employees can work from home for the rest of their lives if they want. Oh, like, I didn't see that. Like if if you're working for the company. Mm-hmm. currently because of the way it's already structured and it's working efficiently it's like you guys can just stay working from home if you want and i was like oh that's pretty like this one that's a pretty ballsy move and two that could be the new normal coming out of this yeah. you know like yeah. like our companies like i know yours is not remote but like mine is so it could just be fully remote after that mm-hmm. it's like why do we need to pay for no some parts of my company is some parts 
A remote? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but I mean like your job specifically. My specifically, yeah, my no, no, yeah. Right, but like, like mine. Like so, it's interesting because because mine before they got the office space, they were a hundred percent remote, and then they got the office space, so people were going there. And right. <laughs> then all of a sudden this happened and it's like, we're just back to square one, like how it originally was, you know? Right. <laughs> so, like, oh, yeah. mm-hmm. but, but you save a lot of money because how much does it cost for an office, you know? And like, yeah, exactly. The overhead is probably crazy, you know? Mm-hmm. You, I, I think that people get offices in order to create an aesthetic. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. You, you, oh, let's meet in my office. All right, boardroom, boardroom meeting, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's like yeah. we could have just been doing this remotely, you know, Zoom. And I, I think it, I think it was going in that direction. I think this this thing just fast tracked it. True. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you on that one. It'd be really fascinating to see, like, at the end of this, like all these remote companies, and then they just rent out, um, they rent out workspaces. Right. You know, like WeWork and stuff. Mm-hmm. So it's like it could just be because because I worked for a different like a freelance for them, but like another company that I freelance for, they had no office, and like they were traveling a lot, and then they would they'd be like, okay, let's meet at this um, shared office based location, right? You know, and then I'd like go there, and then we'd have our meeting, and then we just go home, and then mm-hmm. work on our mm-hmm. stuff, you know? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I it, I think in a lot of places might head in that way if um, that's more productive, right? But do you think like salaries will decrease then? Because mm, you know what I mean. It's like, okay, true. Yeah, I feel you on that one. Yeah, true, true, true. I I just think like like mm-hmm. like it's 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 funny because like so because. Um, everyone's got like a reduced pay scale now. Yeah. It's, well, I mean like, I'm, I don't think you do cause you're like actually there full time, but like, because, because of like funding structures, et cetera, it's like, since we have a reduced one, um, I was actually doing the, the accounting on my side and I was mm-hmm. like, oh, the amount that I lost is actually the amount that I would have spent had I been commuting. And buying right. lunch every day and all that stuff, you know what I mean? And it's like, yeah. it's like, oh, like the amount that you're giving me right now is the exact same amount I would have had after the fact, you know? Right. So that, right. that's why I mean, like, would salaries decrease? Because it's like, they're like, well, you're not commuting. You can save on this. Like, or, or maybe they won't well, decrease. They, they don't generally. Yeah. But when they look at, when they look at um, um, income, they don't look at, at you spending on transit and stuff, right? Oh that, really? Eh? Okay. Yeah, no, no, that's not all in in that calculation. It's just see, based on the see, work, right? So right, right, right. It's so just, technically you would be making more money. True. Yeah. Yeah. To... yeah you're right. Yeah. It, it's funny that you say that because like I come from a freelance background, so like for mm-hmm. me it's all about like give and take. You know what I mean? It's like. <laughs> It's like, well, okay, how much are you going to charge to edit that video? Well, it's going to cost me this. Like, I, I put everything into the cost. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, okay, commuting to you, filming for those hours. I also got to, you know, add things. They're, like, called, like, overhead costs. But, like... Yeah, but that's that's you are... That's the service you're good doing, right? So you have to include all that in your in your cost. I'm saying as a... An employee. You work, like, yeah, so like if someone was your employee, you wouldn't be thinking about their transit necessarily unless it's part of the contract. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's why I'm saying it's funny because I come from a freelance background. So for me, that's the first thing I think of. I'm like, how much is this costing me and benefiting me? Whereas mm-hmm. you're like, okay, but regulation states. And I'm like, yeah, I've never really lived in the regulation world until like recently. So I actually don't know how any of this works. So I thought that they, they accounted that. In your salary? No. <laughs> okay, that's that's dumb. No, okay. because like, yeah, but like anyone can, you know, you can come from far place. That's you know, you can spend tw- you know like much more on transit versus if you live right next door, right? True, but it's but in terms walking, of it's like there, it's not it's not it's not part of that kind of thinking. Oh uh, yeah, fascinating. Yeah, you know, so I I get you. 
I, I think I was thinking more of like, because I remember this one conversation with this person I used to work with at a different company. They were mm-hmm. like, they were like, oh, I, I bargain, like I, I said I would take the job if they gave me an increase because I have to pay this much to get to work. And I was like, oh, is that how that works? Like, I, I didn't know, you know. No, but that's not generally the way it's said. But like, you can ask for increases. That that's that's a different thing, right? Right, right, right. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. So, um, uh, so another thing I was thinking about in terms of things that might change is like yoga and martial arts studios because I'm really into that world, and I'm just like I'm not seeing it in the future. Like, like prior to this, I was obsessed with learning different martial arts and like, you know, like pursuing yoga and all that. But it's like, is that even a really viable industry anymore? And I, I like work for them, right? You know? Yeah. But like watching them diminish because of the lack of um, connectivity, it's kind of like. It just, you know? I, it doesn't work for those sort of things it doesn't work uh like zoom or online or whatever you have to be in there right so So, totally yeah yeah like uh, like they're doing a band-aid solution though right now like everyone's doing a band-aid which is like zoom you know yeah but at the same time it's like i don't feel like i i always wanted to learn martial arts and yoga because it seemed very practical Mm -hmm. but like now it's like or maybe it's because I know so much, like I've satisfied that level, but also like egoically in terms of pursuing belts, you know, because I really mm-hmm. want like a grappling belt, right? Because I have a striking belt and like a weapons based belt, you know, but like I, I wanted to fulfill it with a grappling. But then in this time, it's like, why would you even do that? You know, like we're social distancing. People don't even come close to each other. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like it just seems... It just it seems like not impractical, but like unnecessary. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, um, but the, the, I think these things will come back. I think a lot of them will be impacted. There'll be probably a lot like less places, but they will. Uh, I think people still want it to do all that stuff. Yeah, true. No, like I I agree with you, but. But what it just, if it's like how it how be, much longer? It just won't be, yeah, it's just yeah, it's it's about timing. I don't know how long, but it's um, we'll see. Like, because they're starting to do the like the phases of re, and you can kind of see. You'll probably see like what are, people are probably getting more tired staying at home, and they just at that point probably they don't care and they just want to go out. <laughs> I don't know, but like that's happened in some states in in America, so. What do you mean, like the protests and stuff? Not just the protests, but like, like some states that have opened up, bars are open. Like they're, they're, people are going in. No, totally, totally. So like in terms of like bars, right? Like entertainment is an essential like pursuit for mm-hmm. all human beings, right? But like yeah. yoga and martial arts is such like an extraneous thing. No, I know. I, you know yeah, what I mean? It's I, I like... Just don't know. About, I don't know about the martial arts because that's your person. You're actually like touching another person, but like in yoga, you're doing it by yourself, right? To- totally, totally. But even even like all right, that aside, but think about like, so a membership isn't cheap, right? It's like 150 a month. Right, right, right. So it's yeah. like, do we have the money for that? And like, what if they all close? Where am I gonna go? Mm-hmm. Like locations are gonna become more scarce people will still be kind of nervous to go in. Like, I mean, I would go back. Yeah. But I would go. Yeah, yeah. To- totally, but it's like I just wonder like how much time will pass that complacency kicks in. Mm-hmm. You're just like, ah, "I don't really need this in my life anymore." You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no. I think in the short term, yes, that that will be there. I think overall in the long term when things do and we'll tend to get back to normal when I don't know, but like oh, I, so oh, so you're saying like like years from now or something? Yeah, yeah, I, I yeah. could see that. That makes sense, actually. Yeah, okay. So like in the long run, but in the short term, maybe not. But then in the yeah. short term, a lot will just close. Yeah. So you think it's gonna be like years before we get back to normalcy? Eh? 
It might be, yeah. Because if there's a phase two, as they say, there might be in the winter. So that'll have another impact. So True. Man, that's cr- it's so crazy to think about. <laughs> you, you know what I all right, speak like in terms of like in line with yoga and martial arts in terms of mm-hmm. fitness fitness studios okay like working out yeah I'm noticing that like you know like prior to this everybody would go to the gym and they want to get swole <laughs> yeah right but I think now it's more so people are looking towards like body weight and cardio you know what well, I mean? to, stay, to stay fit yeah, yeah to, to stay fit and it's like it almost seems like that might be the new trend, especially if we're social distancing and like gyms and martial arts and yoga studios are probably going to be the last ones to open. It's like, are we headed towards a yeah, more I mean, cardio-based society, it, you know? Uh, in the long run, I don't know. But like it, that is like um, uh, like that's not out of choice, right? It's out of necessity. No, no, totally. So I I agree with you. But like, but like people pursue getting swole because of um, media and like. No, no, no. mm -hmm. No, no, no. Like, I understand that. That's what I'm saying. Like that in the short term, we will see an uptick in that. But I don't, again, when things get back to normal, I don't, I think it'll just go back back to to whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. I see what you're saying. Yeah. So it'll be like years again. I, yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't want to say years. I just, again, if there is no phase two, like there, like I mean, sorry, there's if there's no second phase to this thing, then second wave, uh, second wave, yeah. If there's no second wave to this thing, then I think it'll be much more sooner to go back to normal. True. Yeah, yeah I, I see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah, it's funny. Like I was watching the UFC fights. Did you do you catch them at all? There's another one today as well, without um the audience. Mm-hmm. same place or a different area uh same place for now because it's just been a week right so within right. this because they have like a contract they have to fulfill like x amount of fights mm-hmm. before the end of the year it's in their contract so uh what they're doing right now is they're loading us up with as many like special event fights as they can to fulfill that contract so that's why there's right. three there's been three within one week Oh, okay, okay. So like it was like last Saturday, this Wednesday, and then today. Which Has is it been Saturday. successful? Is it doing, was it doing good? Uh, yeah, I mean, you'll never know. A reporter asked uh, Dana White, and was like, oh, what did ESPN think? And like, ES- he's like, oh, they are extremely satisfied. They should have listened to me a long time ago. But I'm like, also, <laughs> at the same time, you're the only sports thing on. You know? Right, yeah. So, of course your ratings are going to be super high, you know? Right. But in terms of that, I actually prefer, it reminds me of like the old pride days where like, cause in Japan, the audience is super silent while they're fighting. Mm-hmm. So you can hear like, cause it's out of respect, right? It's like, we don't want to distract you while you're fighting. So you just fight for our amusement and we'll be silent, you know? Um, and it's, it's interesting to see them fighting in mm-hmm. silence because you can hear all the corner people you know right. you can you can hear like actually one of the funniest things is like so tony ferguson versus um justin gaethje they fought and tony was getting like lit up right and then he goes so eddie bravo you know eddie bravo right yeah so he's like uh he goes back tony goes back to the corner after getting lit up in the first round and then you can hear Eddie Bravo. You can hear because you can hear Quarterman now, right? You can hear what they're saying. So Eddie Bravo is like, "It's like you're doing good, man. You do, you're doing good." And it's like, dude, that was your advice. Like in between rounds, you're just gonna give him a little pep talk. And then the other guy jumped in, and was like, "I need to see like a four, five, six, seven, eight. You know what I mean? Like, like giving him like real strategy. But it's just funny to see like you can see the Quarterman that are there for like precision, and then the Quarterman that are there for like boosting your ego. Right, right. You know, it's really funny because it was like he had no suggestions, just like, how you doing good, man? You're just cracking him, cracking him, you know, getting it, getting it. You know, like, mm. yeah, it was, it was just <laughs> funny to see from that perspective. And then, and then, like, in I guess round three, he was getting lit up so hard. So then Eddie's like, hey, man, you know, maybe we got to go for like an Imanari role, you know, like a, it's like a, it's like a move to initiate grappling, right? And then Tony goes, eh. 
like but you could hear it right because like usually right, the right. audience is so loud you can't hear this stuff but like because all you can hear is them it's like that is some awkward interaction you know yeah you get to actually see the like actually hear yeah the, 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 and then and then like other ones are just like don't give up don't give up you're not weak <laughs> you know it's like what this is what cornermen do <laughs> you know? yeah. I guess so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But you know, you never think about it, right? You're like, oh, they're probably giving him some crazy strategy of how to overcome this opponent, and then it's just like, hey, you're not a goddamn pussy. Man up, man up. Wait, we have we have heard that though. We have heard sometimes. Right? Yeah, you, yeah. But they're like terrible cornermen. You're just like, what? But like hearing everyone now, it's like, oh, some cornermen are just there to boost your ego. You know? Well, yeah, technically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, funny, funny stuff. Um uh, like I hear um like in Korea they're doing baseball, like they have baseball but no audience, right? I think that they I heard like um like the audience are watching it on TV or it's like an app that um plays the audio in the stadium like when they cheer or Oh, um, really? Yeah, something like that. Like they're trying, so like if they're if they're home court advantage, so they'll be a little bit more louder of that cheer, like something like that. That they're doing claps and stuff like that. That's working through your phone and going onto this uh, the speakers in in uh, in the stadium. But how wait? How does that work? So they're recording your home. No, no, no. So it's an app. You're where you're you're like you would press a button on the app like clap or whatever it is and then it's like oh my god are you serious so it's like two wow you know no, I, get, I get what you're saying so it, it's like yeah. it's like engaging more interactivity through this app you can like you can like start yeah. you can yeah. like yeah. add to the scene or whatever yeah. yeah yeah and it's it's playing in the in the stadium where the players are playing the game that's so interesting you, you know you know what's also like that too like this, um, this like connectivity, like celebrities, mm -hmm. like like breaking the wall through technology, like like your example, it's like celebrities are doing a very similar thing now. You know, they're doing like a lot of Q and A's, and like they'll just call each other. Like on my Instagram feed, it's like uh, this person now going live with this person, and I was like, okay, what's it like? So I click on it, and they're just having a conversation with the audience there in the chat. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's so weird to me. I'm like, wow, this is like a like breaking the third wall kind of thing, you know? Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, uh, it's like Twitch, but that's Twitch. It's, yes, it's that's what it is. That is what it is. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because I was like, oh, I've seen this before, but I just don't know where. Yeah, Twitch, Twitch. Yeah. Oh, so like, funny. Yeah, it's already being done on Twitch, but it's people like the famous people didn't generally get into this now they're no, just thinking yeah right i have nothing else to do so they're interacting with their fans this way which is the same way as twitch in a way so yeah you know it's, i totally agree it's really but like again it kind of bores me like i don't really i don't know it's, it seems kind of weird to be like like um in somebody's conversation like all right so like a podcast is different right so like i'm listening to joe rogan and a guest have a conversation, right? If you're listening to us right now, you're listening to us have a conversation. If you're interjecting with like your ideas and comments, we're not really having a a conversation. It's more like a town hall at that point. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, it's yeah. kind of weird. Like I, I went into it. I was like, oh, I got to leave. Like this is weird to me. Because mm -hmm. you see like all the comments and they'll read one and then like they'll engage with it. It's like, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, that is weird. Normally, yeah, that is weird. Yeah. So generally, again, there this is new to them too, right? Mm -hmm. uh, even with Twitch, that is there, but also it's like you are setting up a method of entertainment, so you do set up a show. Like some people might do that. Like bigger, bigger audiences would have, um, like. I, I know like some people do like interviews or they talk about certain discussions with someone else. Mm -hmm. You're watching it like a show versus they are not. So, so it, it, I, I get what you're saying. So, so it's like separate. Yeah. So you have like, yeah. you have the show that's going on and then the chat room is like the community. Yeah. So it's like, it's like we'll be in the community and the whole community is talking to each other, but like the show hosts are not actually engaging. 
Yeah, or they're engaging at random times. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. You're saying. Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot like the live. You, you know who's been who's been doing that, and I'm like actually super fascinated. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, I, I would vote for you. Um, maybe because Trudeau's. I, I really like Trudeau. He's like showing himself to be a great leader. But um, Jagmeet Singh, right? The NDP yeah. leader. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He does like he's so hip, and I'm like, oh wow, this is like mm-hmm. this is the new generation. You know, he'll do. You know the switch challenge? How like it'll play like um, Drake's song, and then they'll like flip the light switch, and then they'll have switch places in clothes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've yeah. seen that meme, right? Yeah, yeah. Or the challenge. He did one of those with his wife, and I was like, oh, dude, can't believe you just did that, you know? And then he'll do, he'll do these, like, live Instagram sessions where he'll, like, talk to the audience on Instagram and then have, like, a guest. And, like, he's just, like, in his house, and he's twirling his beard and stuff. And I'm like, wow, you are literally tapping into the youth party, you know? Well, yeah, I mean, if you look at a lot of the uh, younger politicians, uh, at least I can think of some in, in America, uh, they do all that, yeah. They oh, really? really? They interact. Yeah, yeah. But it, it's fascinating because, like... But it makes it makes sense, though, because that they their future um, voter bases in, on, on the Internet. Oh, I get what you're saying. So it's sort of like you're... Oh, actually, speaking of which... All right, we'll, we'll put a pin in that really quick, that thought. Um, but so... You think they're playing the long game? Yeah, I mean, they know that. You know what I mean? It's, it's like, okay, in eight years, you, I'll have built a following, so then you'll vote for me. Yeah. Interesting. I didn't think about it like that. It almost feels like um, Trudeau's, like, the like, last of, yeah, 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 you're saying? No, like, yeah, they're building the who, like younger fan base that is um, on those platforms, and then it's they're also getting their word out to... Um, like they are doing the normal stuff too, which is like you know the radio stuff. Who who listens to radio, right? Right, right. Those, right. But they're doing all that. They're hitting all the platforms they need to hit in order to get, you know, a bigger voter. Right, turnout. totally, totally, totally. Yeah, I get what you're saying. I I feel like Trudeau is um the last of the old guard. Like he's like the bridge between the old and the new. Because like I follow yeah. him. Right, I follow him on social media, and I'm like, "You're kind of there. Like, you're you're kind of like like Jagmeet Singh is like, that's his name, right? I I, yeah. I don't want to be butchering it. Sorry. Um, yeah. So like, he's a part of one crowd, right? He's like super open, right? Mm-hmm. And then you have on the other side the super conservative. I feel like Trudeau's like in the middle because he's like he's kind of engaging, but he's like not that engaging, you know? Right. Yeah. So I find that fascinating. I don't know. I don't know if it changes. If see if if Jagmeet becomes prime minister, I don't know if it changes. I was thinking that too. I was like, would it? Would they be like stop doing these lives? Yeah, I I think there would be some changes. I think so. Okay, true, true, true. Okay, so to take that yeah. pin out and like readdress it, what do you think about voting? You think it's gonna be online now? Uh, like that in- could be really freaking interesting. It can be online. Yeah, we'll see. I think. Because if it's online, you open access to everyone. You don't have to wait in those lines. Like, why are you waiting in the line? Just use your SIN card. Use your date of birth and, like, whatever, you know? Yeah, again, yeah, that's true. There are already ways to, you know, you can log into your CRA account and stuff. That's exactly. all secure. So exactly. what's the difference between that and voting? Yeah. Totally, totally. But And then you'd have less manipulation of the votes. Right, like what they were doing with Bernie Sanders, like closing polling places early, and like, et cetera, et cetera, you know, or like the people yeah, that are like, yeah. I can't get to voting because I'm at work. Mm-hmm. But that sucks for like workers because you get like kind of a half day if you say you're gonna go vote, you know. Right. Yeah. But like yeah. also, you know, the main concerns are always security about anything with technology, right? But. Yeah, but like oh. we do it with the CRA website. Oh, do you see that thing with like? That's, that's, yeah. do, do you see mm-hmm. that thing with the CRA website? Like, there's like two hundred thousand cases of fraud, but like Trudeau's like just just keep going, like just accept everyone. Yeah, I I, I under from my thinking or understanding, it's like uh, they will get to those cases. They just right now we cannot focus on that. Yeah, totally manpower. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I get what you're saying. 
It's like we will. But do... I, I don't know if we're gonna get that money back. That's a... What? What do you mean get that money back? Like the from the fraud cases, I'm saying. Oh yeah, like, true. Can they? Um, you're, you're gonna like. Will they, will they be able to recover all that or not? I don't know if they wait too long. If they are not in the country, I don't know how it works. Oh, I see. I see what you're saying. Yep, yep. I totally get what you're saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because like you can do like, um, yeah. If you leave the country, you don't have to pay for it, or like, mm -hmm. um, there's statute of limitations. I don't know, like something like that. Yeah, yeah. I get what you're saying. Um, there's so much more to cover, and we've almost hit an hour. Um, we might oh, have wow. to do. Yeah, I know. We might have to do like a part two of this next time because like i still have more on my list of things that i'm like oh this might change um all right let's get to um let, let's end off with um ah uh, hmm because i have so much here that's good all right we'll get back to it next time Let, let's end off with uh this one that i saw uh ttc so yes. i saw this thing where people were like i'm not going to use the ttc anymore um if there's no vaccine. Like, like mm -hmm. the majority of people said that they're not going to use it. So like, that's definitely going to stunt, you know, travel businesses, yeah. workloads, you know, uh, are the ones saying that already have vehicles or true. We like... might just purchase vehicles. No, uh, actually, I, I don't know. It was just like a stat that they threw out there that like, but again, it's like, can you trust the stat, et cetera, et cetera, you know? No, I know. Uh, but again, like, right now, it would seem like, would you travel on Uber or would you go on transit? But that's so expensive. Like, no, I'm, I'm thinking about, like, day-to-day -day workers, you know? Yeah. No, I know, I know. But, right, like, right now, there isn't a lot of people using transit, so it, it may be that it's more safer to use transit. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agree. I agree. You're right. You're right. But but right. in terms of like once, like let's say they open everything back up. They're like, okay, everything's normal again. Not, not normal, yeah. but like you can go out, but there's no vaccine. Like people were like, mm -hmm. no, I'm not going back to work through the transit. You know? Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, I think, very plausible for many cases. Yes. Um, but then see, see, that's like a, that's a domino effect that, you know, because it's like a yeah. lot of things are going to be affected by that. But again, if already people are working from home also, it's already affecting it, right? So you're not buying the lunch, right, as you said. So mm, that's true. already, that's a ton of people not going into work if they can work from home. There there goes more restaurants again. It, it's, I don't know when it's going to come back to normal. I uh, I mean, there is no normal. It's just the new normal. That, that is, that's the t title of this thing, right? So yeah, yeah, totally. We will... A lot of changes will happen. A lot of things, a lot of job losses will happen. One thing I found kind of interesting is like in most recessions, they say that males are the ones who lose their job the most, like uh, percentage wise. Oh, why? why? Why is that? No, no, no. Uh, uh, in in a normal, like in the 2008 recession, it was more males who lost jobs. Yeah, I'm asking in why. So, yeah, I'm, I'm getting there. So in this one, uh, it's more females who have lost jobs than males. Oh, why? Because wow, well, think about it. Restaurants, like all those jobs, waitresses. Oh, that is mean. interesting. That's like super sexist, but like I totally get what you're saying. Actually, it's not super sexist. It's just like in the general, like the percentage. No, 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 yeah, no, no. I, I, no, no. Like the sexist <laughs> of like, oh, people like hostesses are usually female, not male. But it actually like it. Yeah, so I was it, just trying to make a general. Point, no, no, yeah. no, no. I I don't mean like I don't mean like you're being sexist. I mean <laughs> like that just creates a stereotypical narrative on the whole, and it's funny because it's like how stats work. It's like no, we're not being sexist. That's actually a stat. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But like SJWs would be like, that's sexist. Like hostesses can be male too. You know. But it's right. like no, okay. no, I'm but. Just, yeah. I'm just trying to state a uh, yeah, statistic. Yeah, yeah, you were saying a statistic, but I'm saying like this can be misconstrued by SJWs being like, you know, why can't a man be, you know, but it's like, yeah, you can be, but studies show that on the whole. Yeah, so, yeah most of them are not. Our yeah. hostesses are female. And actually, you know, yeah. that, that makes a, 
that makes like a lot of sense now that you said it like that with like most like females losing their jobs. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah. Yeah, that sucks. Anyone like anyone in that like service food industry or like any yeah. sort of service industry. It's not yeah, really... that's, like even retail, right? I think if you're retail, who works at retail mostly? Right. Again, yeah, yeah, totally. Right. So those are all Damn, like, I mean, like, it. this is such, like, a deep cut, you know? Like, you you, you think about it, you look at it at first glance, mm-hmm. and you're like, okay, we're just going to shut down the economy. Totally cool, whatever, all good. But it's like the ramifications of that decision cut so deeply, and you didn't know how it, – it's almost like you, you, you tried – you had to cut something, so you pulled out a blade, and you cut me in the leg, but you hit an artery. I don't – so – yeah, like yeah, there's more to get into this, but like, you're. That's why this is part one. We're gonna do part two next. Week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, go, go ahead. With the economy thing, it's it's much more. When you shut it down, it's a much more longer game of or longer problems to have. It's not just like they wanted to protect as many people as possible from dying from this thing, but I think overall there will be more people uh, or more hurt, issues hurt for this. Yeah. For the shutting down, yeah. Do, do you see us, uh, like, speaking of shutting down, do you see the Elon Musk thing where, uh, I thought this was kind of funny, um, he he wanted mm-hmm. his factories open, and then uh, Trump tweeted back, like, like, let those factories open, blah, 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 and then Elon Musk, like, thanked him. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, I was like, I was like, because, cause, like, if you look at it, people are, like, angry, because they're like, oh, why are we going to open it, this factory, whatever, whatever. But it's like, it really depends on what side you're looking at this from. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, even that is not like the full, like people are just hating on Elon, but they don't know the whole story. The whole story is the governor of California said that things can open or factories can open. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Okay. But it was the it was the county that he's in is saying not to open. So he's saying that the, the governor has a bigger jurisdiction, like, oh, like in the, so fascinating. The, so that's why. And then Trump tweeted that out, and he's just because Trump or Elon has been saying that we should open up. Do, and yeah, then, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I get what you're saying. The, this is why I love that you read the actual article, and I only read the title. <laughs> you know, because yeah. like, because that actually makes sense. Because it's like you look at it, so it's it's all about framing. You know, you like look at it. And you're like, okay, he wants to endanger people's lives. But it's like, no, actually the governor of California said – it was California, right? Yeah. Actually the governor of California said uh, we can open. I'm just lobbying for my rights to be open. Yeah. It's just his county that was saying no. But in – like who's the you know the bigger – What I forgot the term, but it's like uh, – Authority. Yeah, yeah, you were saying. Yeah, who's the bigger authority here, right? The governor said it, so it should – it should be fine then. Yeah. Um, and it's not like they're not taking social distancing into account when they reopen. Uh, right. The fact yeah. that, right, that is, of course, put in, into the guidelines. So they're going to be doing that. And it's uh, in uh, over in America, they nobody like here. People are, are um, uh, getting either the wage subsidy or the CERB um, money. Right. Which is covering 2000 for like four months. Yeah. Over there, it was only a one-time check, so people don't. So they have need money. they need they the need. economy to be open. Yeah, yeah, and people do want to go back to work. True, true, true. Yeah, that's yeah. a fair point. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll leave it there. I was gonna get yeah. into like more about like, sir, but I was like, you know what? Part one done. Uh, we'll <laughs> leave it there. Great way to end it. We're gonna talk about Elon because he is like a genius, and um, yeah, mm-hmm. this is a we're definitely like i know the catchphrase was like the new normal as we were going into this and i was like i don't think so because it depends on how long this lasts but like this is actually such a deep cut that we are actually facing a new normal i i think uh like we were saying that um maybe a month ago like depends on how long this lasts I yeah we think were saying that yeah yeah totally i think i think we're reaching the point of the new normal it is it is, uh, yeah, and it's also longer, um, 
uh, like it will be longer. Like we know it's going to be longer and it's already been long enough that I think there's going to be a big impact. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Yeah, I see your point. Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, it has definitely cemented in our minds long enough now that the ramifications are not going to be undone and they're just going to keep propelling forward into a new normal of how we're doing things with our lives. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, it's, yeah. I really thought, like, if it was just going to be two weeks, I was like, no, this, this is not new normal. What are you talking about? But, like, as the months stretch on, we're into eight weeks, it's like, yep, this is, we're facing an entirely new reality when we emerge mm-hmm. from this. Like, they're, they're not even opening, I believe, the border to the U.S. until, uh, I think, either into June or into July. So, that's already going to, like, that's already, you know, that's long enough to make big changes, so. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. I'm, but I'd like to, not caution, but, like, reassure mm-hmm. anyone who's listening that, like, it's really, again, it goes back to framing. Actually, I'm, I'm about to put out this really awesome sea spook story about framing. But, um, cause that's why I mm-hmm. keep saying framing. Cause it's like, it's totally in my mind right now, but like, like this isn't a bad thing, you know, sure. The old ways are dead, but you can't rise like a Phoenix until the ashes are there. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's yeah. like, Sure, it's the new normal, but there's so many new opportunities with the new normal. It's like we're actually facing a freer world, right? Which we'll get into next week. That's what we didn't get into here, and that's why I was super – like I, I didn't want to delve into that, like the new things that – the amazing features of like this new digital space, you know? Mm-hmm. We'll do that next time, but like yeah. um, mm-hmm. I think there's a lot of opportunity here, you know? Yeah despite the terror that we're all feeling, you know, it's because we're afraid of everyone. Like it's an innate, it's an innate human quality to be afraid of the un- unknown. But like, if you know how to surf waves are just things that you ride, they don't crash you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So. I mean, right. Yeah. And I think, yeah, yeah it's, that's a good point. And I think, um, in the long run, like, he, we, we'll figure these things out. It's not like the end of the world. Yeah, that basically, yes. That's exactly what I'm trying to say, too. Yeah, it's not the end of the world. Like, we're emerging into a new world. It's all good. Yeah. Yeah. Expect this to be a cut of one of those. <laughs> this is a good little <laughs> sound bite right here. Okay, so any any final thoughts? Do you want to say anything? Uh, no, you got to check out... I don't, I, I don't know what I'm saying. No. <laughs> check, check us in realclothingco.com. Is that what you're going to say? Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. So, um, yeah, check out zenrealclothingco.com. Uh, free playlists out there if you want to listen to some moon music. And uh, if you feel so inclined, pick up some apparel and use offer code SG Podcast for 20% off select items. Till next week and part two of our new normal series. Take it easy. Peace. Bye.